I'm delighted to welcome today Debbie Cundy, who has got a quite a remarkable story of transformation, haven't you, Debbie? Um, yeah, I think so. I think um, I've come on quite a bit of a journey, to be fair, uh, Elaine. Yeah. So, um, how would you describe yourself? I, I, I'm always intrigued when I when I in, interview people and I say to them, "How do you want me to introduce you?" People like you have so many different aspects. You know, we could class you as a charity worker, uh, a skydiver, a coach, a mentor, um, uh, a guest speaker. There's all kinds of things. An amazing uh, transformation you've done yourself with slimming. So how, how do you describe yourself? Um, I think I describe myself as um, a person that um, is quite approachable. Uh, that I love to try and support people. Um, so I think I'm I'm a person that is um, a bit of an all rounder, really. I'm, I don't like to think things phase me, and I'll I'll have a go at anything. But I think all in all, I think I would describe myself as um, a person that's quite passionate about supporting other people to achieve the goals. Really, yeah. Um, okay. So let's let's go back. So um, where where would you say your journey of transformation started? Um, I think it was round about when I was in my sort of mid mid twenties, really. Um, I I was quite uh, overweight, and I think that came from a, a family up, upbringing of uh, the old school of feed them up, feed them up, the happy scenario. And whilst we had well. Uh, cooked home cooked food um there was always uh, in abundance and i think not until i was probably in my late sort of mid 20s that the, the reality of actually being quite overweight sort of hit me like a train really um i was invited to um a prestigious event in sheffield with my partner at the time and i needed a something nice to wear and, and I think uh, the you know the, the, the ladies who listen to the story will resonate with that and at the time I was massively overweight I was I was probably about a UK 24-26 dress um, and I always remember going into the Sheffield City Centre and looking for something nice to wear and, and, and that was I think the point where I thought I need to do something about what I look like now and um and I'd, funny enough I'd never been on a diet ever before and I suppose my weight never bothered me before either I think it was that that initial wake-up call and, and also at the time as well my mum had, had had her first heart attack at 40 about 45 and sub subsequently went on to have a triple heart bypass by 55 so it was this these things that were sort of thinking, well, this is your big why really to, to do something about it now. So I'd never been on a diet before, as I said, and, and, and I'd, I'd got, I thought probably around about 12, sorry, about, about seven stone to lose at that time. And um, I looked at the local swimming club, uh, which was at the time Weight Watchers. And I remember coming to this swimming club and it was a dark November evening. I was, and I was so nervous. And, and I, you know, I walked into this room and, and, and I sat there and before the event started, there was a lady sat outside of my house, remember her name was Sandra, and she was slim and she was attractive and she was beautiful. And, I, and you, you know, you should never judge anyone, you know, you should never really judge. And I thought, well, why is she here? You know, why is she here? I've probably got about seven, eight stone to lose and she, and she looked at me and she said, you're wondering why I'm here, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. She says, well, just wait till, till it starts. And basically, this, this woman, she'd, she'd lost eight stone in weight and she was here to basically get an award. So I suppose in, in a coaching term, she was where I wanted to be. I, she was the, the vision of, I could see it was, it was doable, it was achievable. And week on week, I went to that swimming club and I lost seven stone in 17 months. And uh, in fact, I tell you, it was just remarkable, really. Like, people didn't recognise me. And I even got myself a new fella. So, <laughs> who, 
who was actually my husband now, but um, it was a, just remarkable, you know, that that person and all the other things that I just spoke about my mom and, and the reality of not being able to get something nice to wear, it was just unbelievable. So there was, I was, and I was sort of in my sort of like mid twenties and I got myself a new partner. And so he didn't know the, the, the previous me. He just knew me as this slim, slim person really. Um, and uh, I kept my weight off. I lost seven stone, I kept it off for probably a good five, about five years. And then in 2000, sorry, 1996, sorry, um we um michael and i got married and uh, just two weeks before i were getting married my father came well we didn't realize it was as so serious as what it turned out to be but um we thought it was a water infection and he ended up going into hospital for some tests and it turned out to be a really really aggressive form of cancer and two weeks before I we were getting married, he was taken to um, hospital uh, into the theatre, and he was um, he had a twenty percent of pulling through this, this surgery. It was it was terrible time because there were I was getting married, and my father was really ill. And um, I decided to continue to get married. And um, I've always been a quite a positive person, you know. I've always been the one I think who's sort of kept things together, you know. And and I think that. I suppose resonates why I went into sort of coaching and, and charity work and supporting people because I think I was the always the one that if anybody wanted to have a sounding board, even when I was younger at school or it's when I was with her, you know, she, you know mm. she'd put you on the street. I think I was that person and I, I think it was always meant to be. I do what I do. So, um, we got married and we had a beautiful wedding and in between the reception of the, 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 the day and the evening I went to see my father in the wedding dress at the hospital and he was basically completely out of it, it was an intensive care it, it, it was a very strange real time I walked into the room and, and there I was stood at side of him beside his bed and, and did he know I was there probably probably in my heart, I think I felt it. it, it I, I did I had that sense that he knew I was there, and um, he, he, as I say, he went into hospital about two weeks before we got married, and he he, he picked up and he, he had such resilience, and he even had some of our wedding cake, you know, and we thought hey, he's going to pull through this, and he had such a journey to continue to go. He had skin grafts and all everything. He was he was in a bad way. And um, he he took a dip, and unfortunately he he died the same year. So he went he died in November of 1996. So um, I think because then I had time to sort of reflect, and I got married, and there were all these things that were sort of preoccupying. I didn't really have time to probably think about my dad, and in, in the terms of the grieving situation, and. It, it, it really did, you know, come come to me and hit me like a train. And within two years, I put five stone back on in weight. So, you know, that I mean, I understand that now. It was the emotional connection, the just reaching out for something, and and it was just like that. I put I put five stone back on. So. It, I think you have to go through this this wave of resilience, don't you, where you start to go through all everything, you hit rock bottom and you just have to try and accept what's happened. And I did and I accepted it and I thought to myself, this is not what I want, this is not what my father would want for me. Um, and I started to, to really get back on track. So I suppose with my charity aspect, um, I'd always been involved with Western Park Cancer Hospital in Sheffield right from its, its infancy really. That started with a lady who I worked with at the time whose son uh, had been diagnosed with cancer and she brought these collection boxes to work um, and she'd heard this new charity um, started at the Western Park Hospital and I became, uh, her son 
uh, overcome cancer, which was great. And then over a number of years after that, uh, she she actually got cancer herself. And we used to do the usual things together, you know, cake stoves, and I have sailed down to the Hound Shops between Sheffield a couple of times, and all the normal things that everyone does to raise money. And um, unfortunately, she she passed away herself. She got cancer and she died. And I. I almost took on the mantle of making sure these collection boxes were taken up to the hospital and I built that connection up with the charity. I wanted to know more about what they did. I wanted to know um, all the things really that, you know, where this money was going, what, what impact it had. And so over the last 25 years which hospital charity has been formed, um, I've been on I always say that the hospital charity has been part of my instrumental journey of change because when I knew I had to do something about getting back on track with my weight, um, I bought um, a mountain bike and it, it wasn't expensive, you know, it was a couple hundred quid from Alfred's. And at that time, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd got five stone, good five stone to lose. Um, so I decided to to get the bike and go on like the Trans Pennine Trail, which is you know was safe to go on and and start to try and build some miles up. And um, I thought, right, well, I can actually make this work for myself, and I can actually make this a positive thing and raise money for charity as well. So what I decided to do is I decided to um, cycle around the Derwent Reservoir, which is not that far from myself. It's roughly around about 17 miles. Now, don't <laughs> believe you and I, Elaine, when you have got, you know, five stone to lose and you're not particularly that fit anymore, 17 miles on a bike is a big ask. <laughs> I, I um, couldn't do, Debbie, I couldn't do 17, 17 yards on a bike. I've never had a bike that I've, I, I didn't have a bike as a child and I've tried many times since I've been an adult to try and ride a bike and I'm just hopeless and I've just accepted <laughs> now that I'm not a bike rider. So um, I take my hat off to you with all that weight and the, you know, the balance needed and, and 17 miles is a hell of a way. So that, that was your first kind of major route, was it? Yeah, it was really, yeah. So I thought, right, I'm gonna do this. And I cycled 17 miles around the Derwent Reservoir for, for the Western Park Cancer Charity. And I was so proud of myself that I'd done it. But believe you and me, I knew I'd done it. You know, <laughs> you know that, 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 that seat at the time was not, wasn't very forgiving. So, so that was my first sort of journey on, on getting used to a bike and raising money for, for Western Park again. And, you know, I'd, I'd raised quite a lot of prior to that. And then I thought, right, well, if I can do 17 miles, maybe I can cycle a little bit further. So I looked at other charities and the British Heart Foundation used to do one through Sherwood Pines and it went more off road. And, and it was always around about October, November time when, you know, the weather wasn't brilliant. And, and I actually did that about three or four times and that was around about 36 miles. So. I was building the mileage up, but also raising money for, you know, uh, good causes. And then I, I continued to do that. I, I did one for the Bluebell Wood, which is obviously Bluebell Wood uh, charity for the for, for, for terminal children, really. Um, and they used to do one called Park to Park. And I think they still do around Rother Valley. And it's, it's basically Rother Valley, Country Park to Poolsbrook, and it's round about 20 miles. And that's a very family orientated. Now, that's fantastic for people at the moment. And as you know, uh, the government have recently tried to inc increase people to, to get on a bike. And I've heard this morning that they're uh, introducing a, a £50 voucher to um, in, encourage people to take the bikes for servicing and, and, and repair and getting back on the road which is great so that was a fantastic one for everyone to get involved with so I started building the miles up and you know and then the crunch came I suppose the really sort of challenge from the cycling perspective was in 2014 uh, when the um, Tour de France came over to the UK and the, in the Grand Depart stage of the Sheffield stage um, 
in uh, in Bradfield, which is not far from where I live. I always remember being there over the weekend and there were, there were these elite cyclists coming through the village. And I can remember standing on uh, a part of the village called Kirk Edge, um, and it's quite a steep hill. And I'm stood there and I'm thinking they're coming soon. And, you know, I'd, I'd not got another bike, I'd, but I always thought I'd like to buy another bike. And I can remember standing on that on the, on this this hill, thinking, "I wish I could get up this hill. I wish I could cycle up this hill," you know. And the famous last words, I think, because that was in two thousand and fourteen, and in two thousand and fifteen, uh, some friends who I worked or worked with, they was part of a cycling small cycling team um, that they used to raise money for a charity called Endeavour which supports, I suppose, young disadvantaged uh, adults get back on track, really. And it's based in Sheffield. And every year they came together as a small cycling group. We know, they're known as the Geeks on Peaks. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they used to do a big charity event with this, the back, they suppose, the background and support from Endeavour, you know. Um, and I always remember one of the guys saying to me, um, Oh, next year we, we're going to we're going to do uh, we're going to do another challenge, the cycling London to Paris. So I said, Oh, yeah, that sounds like brilliant. Would you like to do it? Now, believe you and me, you know, it was I was at a stage where I could probably cycle forty miles, um, you know, at, at best. But we were talking probably around about three hundred miles in three days. You had this thing three three day events, you know. And I thought to myself, yeah, I'd like to give that a go. But I knew I had a lot of training to do, a lot of, you know, focus and um, and certainly needed to get another bike. Now, unwittingly, I actually come from a family of cyclists. Uh, on my mum's sister, on my mum's side, mum's sister, all her social um, and, and people, friends were all into cycling. And um, my cousin, um, he'd been in cycling from being about 14, I mean, he's 53 now. And to be fair to him, he, you know, he's been recognised himself for some of his achievements. And, uh, and uh, I would say his stature is very, is very different to mine. You know, he's a typical, I say, a typical cyclist, you know, there's nothing on him, very slim, you know. And I can remember going to his house and saying to him, uh, I'm thinking of buying another bike. Can you give me some hints and tips? Oh, by the way, I'm cycling London to Paris next year. <laughs> and he's like, well, oh, I says, and I need to know what I need to do. So I was tapping into his skills and resources, you know. And um, so I bought, a, I bought a road bike and, um, well, a cycle cross bike, we actually, a Cannondale cycle, because that was my, my next bike. and. Um, so there I was, week in, week out. Uh, I incorporated other aspects of fitness as well. I used to go swimming uh, at five o'clock, five thirty in the morning, two mornings a week. Uh, I'd uh, do kickboxing, and so I was. I was different, different kinds of um, exercise I was doing as well, not just the cycling. And I would cycle. Um, any opportunity after work for you know for a couple of hours and just do a few miles or most weekends probably at least Saturday or Sunday I'd be doing uh, you know full full day cycling. Anyway, so in 2015, I was a part of this cycling group and we cycled from London to Paris in three days, and that again was become the catalyst to be part of this cycling group. And I, I have raised money for Western Park um, independently, and we raised money as a team for Endeavour. And then in 2016, we cycled uh, across um, across uh, um, across Ireland. We did the County Mayo to Dublin in three days, um, and then in 2017. We cycled from Holyhead to Cardiff in three days. Um, and then in um, 2018, we went through Scotland. Now, Scotland was 
you, you just think Scotland's going to be wet and windy and cold. And, and I must admit, when we did the uh, island cycle, that was what, that is exactly what it was like. It was seven mile headwinds. It was raining. You know, it was. But everyone carried everyone along. You know, it was the. It was hard. You know, it was tough miles. But the the camaraderie of everyone and I can remember saying to to the group that we stopped at a, I think it's something like 30, 40 mile check in and I can always remember it was wet, it was cold. And I can remember saying, Remember guys, we're doing this, this is just a short term pain to gain pleasure. Um, and the people what we're doing it for, they live with you know sort of challenges every day. And it was like a more, so, I suppose, a motivational thing that I just got in my head to say. And then when we did Scotland in 2018, it was hot. It was the summer where it was so hot. And I can remember we were cycling down from uh, through uh, Loch Ness, uh, Fort William Loch Ness, and the, the, the tar on the road was melting it was spitting up under the frame of my bike and <laughs> it was just so hot now i i have friends who i cycle with really and i've got a, such a great mixture of friends through and I've, I've met through cycling who some love the hot weather hotter the better and some prefer it cooler and i must admit i prefer it cooler because of my, my I do catch the sun quite quickly, so I'm a bit of a, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a cooler weather cyclist. But even I'll go out in all weathers, I must admit. Um, so yeah, so in 2018 we we did we did that, and then I was absolutely delighted that uh, in 2019 I was uh, awarded a charity award, the Sheffield Woman of Steel Award for charity, uh, which I was quite quite humble really it was lovely because uh, that award was given to me by um, the daughter of uh, Barbara Rag. Now I don't know if you know but Barbara Rag and her husband uh, won a considerable amount of money on the lottery in Sheffield a few years ago and they did a lot of work for the Children's Hospital and Western Park Cancer Hospital I believe and uh, unfortunately Barbara's passed away but it was a daughter that um, presented me that award and I thought that's lovely you know the recognition for from a charity work but all in all uh, over the period of time I've supported Western Park Cancer Hospital I've probably raised independently probably in the region of I don't know maybe going up to £30,000 maybe and um, as a cycling group over the last, well, since 2014, uh, sorry, 2015, uh, we've raised in the region of £155,000. Wow, now that's that, remarkable. Well, now that, sorry. Well done, that's remarkable. Do you actually ever see any of the countryside? Cause I'm, I'm guessing that your head's down and you're cycling away. I mean, you, all these lovely places you've been to, have you actually enjoyed anything of the countryside that you've been through? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the events, you know, we, we're doing these events and they'd be quite challenging. And I mean, when we went through Wales, uh, we went through um, two national parks, obviously the Brecon Beacons and Snowdonia. So it, it, it it was lovely, you know, you to see such, I mean, we managed to take some fantastic pictures. I mean, yeah, we, we did have to clock some miles up, but we also enjoyed it as well. You know, we enjoyed the scenery and, and uh, Scotland. I mean, it's difficult to choose really, because I, I think Scotland was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I think because the weather was so nice as well, you could appreciate it. You could appreciate what you know, what you, what you saw, uh, and Wales again, just beautiful scenery. Um, so yeah, we managed to. I mean, 
when we went to Scotland um, and we followed basically into Fort William to pick Lockery, uh, we, we actually came past and through Loch Ness uh, and I did a like a video outside of Loch Ness you know so it was it we had time to sort of enjoy ourselves uh, see the scenery uh, but when we had to sort of get on with it you know we did um, and unfortunately because of the coronavirus we were planning uh, this month uh, another uh, event which incorporated a few more different dis disciplines as well so we were going to go back to scotland for endeavor again um and obviously independently i was raising money for western park and we were cycling uh probably about 80 90 miles in scotland we were going to do some open water swimming kayaking and then we're finishing with climbing ben nevis and i think that was oh, wow. again within just you know four days i think we we're going to four or five days we we're going to do that that was going to be this year's challenge uh but obviously because of the situation it's been put postponed till next year so that's that's something to look forward to next year and also with um western park uh the hospital the western park hospital they're celebrating 50 years this year and uh, i was in the infancy of organizing them uh, with a friend of mine um a big event through sheffield um a bed push and uh, we were gonna you know all guns and a blazing we're gonna do make that really quite a special thing but we've had to put that on hold because of the coronavirus it will happen it's just whenever we can do that um and we've been into conversations with the hospital charity and you know and they thought it was a fantastic idea um and then i suppose with lockdown as well has brought a lot of challenges uh for people uh and yeah we're lucky here my, my husband's been sort of shielding really from day one but we have got a really nice garden and he he's been pottering around in that and we came up with this idea of uh raising uh people's sort of awareness and in, engaging people uh, around uh, gardening and uh, encouraging people to grow sunflowers um, whether they've grown them before or never grown them before and uh, last year was the first year that we we did and they were, they were fantastic so we've came up with this idea of um, engaging people to grow sunflowers um, with um, a, a set up a just giving page um and basically it's it's just just for fun initially it's just for fun it's just for people to uh, enjoy growing sunflowers and the amount of people all ages and all abilities that have been getting involved has been absolutely fantastic from grandchildren to people you'd never think of ever learn or even get involved in growing growing anything it's been brilliant and the idea is is that when your sunflowers are at the best just basically uh, measure the tallest one and the head and, 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 and the winner will go into my what I call all of fame mm -hmm. and then the rest of the people we've asked to donate a minimum of five pounds to the, to the just giving page and, and already people have been putting on you know whatever so uh, so that's been nice you know that's been quite quite good but um, I think I think all in all I think my charity work um, and my fitness has been hand in hand very much so um, and I think the way I can only describe it is it's it's been beneficial for me um, and it's been hopefully I've, I've given some back to my community and the, the wider audience so um, but regards to my, to my coaching aspect I suppose the message i think with my coaching is that i, I want people especially people who are probably my age you know in the 50s women i suppose predominantly who may have come to a stage in their lives where i, I call it the um the empty nest syndrome where you know the kids might have gone off to university or they, they, they've sort of lost a bit of a purpose 
is I've been working with women who, I suppose, in some respects, have done that. You know, they've sort of thought, oh, what do I do now? And uh, it's been great to see women, you know, get back on bikes or do some, some other form of exercise or push herself out of the comfort zone. I mean, when I did the skydive uh, last year for Western Park, never in a million years would I thought I'll ever do a skydive. But um, I did, and I think I think the message is, don't be frightened to just go for it, you know. And I think age is just a number, and um, I think if you can give something back as well, is even a bonus, if that makes sense. Mm, absolutely, it's, it makes you feel good, doesn't it, when you help people. Um, it's a two-way street you're not just helping the person you're also helping yourself with your self-esteem your confidence feeling proud I mean that's great great effect on your body and great for, for health and well-being overall yeah absolutely and the, and the, the money that we've raised as a cycling team for Endeavour I mean it's been fantastic because I've given some of my time as well you know to Endeavour um, to support them not just through cycling um, and with some of the money that we've actually raised, they've built a demonstration kitchen uh, to, to basic life skills to show the students that they're building a garden. So it's the process of growing and, and then, you know, cooking and, um, and, and life skills. And I actually went uh, down, because they built, as I said, they built this demonstration kitchen. I went down uh, just before Christmas um, and was showing them how to make gingerbreads and, you know, stars and just things like, you know, just sort of bits and bobs like that. And then what they did then, I believe, is they uh, had a Christmas stall, Christmas fair, and they cooked these items that we'd show them how to make, and they were sort of selling them on. So that was that was quite good. But more recently, I've I've um, I found out that due to the coronavirus, they've been actually using the kitchen, which is fantastic, to help the community. You know, the people that need food and can't get out, and so it's it's actually been utilised for something better again. You know, it's uh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Fantastic. Um, so your coaching business, what, what, at what point did you change from being an employee and training early hours of the morning before work um, to deciding to, to be a, become a coach? Well, I think because all the things that I've spoke about is that I've always been a person that, a bit of a come-to person and my my empathy with charity and supporting people and and uh, I've always had a team of people you know around me uh, as an employer I'm, from a management level I've always had people uh, around me to um, personal develop and train and um, I had a couple of people a couple of friends said to me you know you want to see you want to try and help other people and do what have you ever thought of have you ever thought of and mm -hmm. And I think that was the something in my head. I thought, yeah, well, maybe I should. So I decided to um, study with the coaching academy, and I, I, I qualified as a personal performance coach. Um, and then since that, I've, I've done other courses as well, you know, CPD courses on different aspects as well. Um, and I was absolutely chuffed to bits, really, because then. 2017 um i won an international coaching award uh wow. coaching for a cause award which i suppose at that time i mean i uh even i mean i'll like explain a bit but i was quite felt quite humble really because i'd not been doing coaching that long i think it was the the impact on my i suppose my uh contribution to the to the uh, charity work and, 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 and the community that I suppose I was uh, recognised for, which was, was, was lovely, you know, I, I thought that was great. Um, in, so that was 2017 and 
at that stage I was I was I was I was flying really. I was doing really well and you know people were recognising me and people were coming to work with me. And uh, then on the back of 2018 my my mum became hit, uh, became ill. She was diagnosed with uh, dementia. Um, and I suppose in some respects I took a little bit, a bit of a a bit of step back really from my mum became a bit more priority than heavily involved in my coaching and whilst I was still doing some guest speaking which was good you know I was sharing my story with uh, schools and uh, local businesses and um, the Move More campaign in Sheffield and so that was good I had to sort of cherry pick really what I could and couldn't do because of the situation uh, that was presenting itself for my mum and um, so that was back of 2018 and then um, last September uh, unfortunately my mum had a, a really bad accident at home she fell downstairs and broke her neck and that was just absolutely devastating really I mean I didn't know, we didn't know that time whether she'd survive, you know, we were told to pay herself at worse. And uh, my mum being my mum, you know, she she really fought well and she was always understanding what was going off um, and the neck did sort of mend itself, they couldn't operate on her because of the other implications that she had. And um, she she lasted with us until April this year. But all through that period, um, and I think in reflection of what had happened with my dad and the way I put on, back on, and um, I have become more mindful about what happened then and what shouldn't happen now and um, more resilient and more, I suppose it's lessons learned because um, in some respects, I'm just grateful that my mum, um, I was to be able to see my mum uh, and be with her when she passed away. And, and, and I suppose in the current situation, not everyone's had that that opportunity really. So that I'm grateful for. Um, I mean, I know you've lost your mum in 2015, was it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And... Um, the, I can remember reading something about your mum saying, you know, go out there and basically do a good job about around cancer, wasn't it? And yeah, tell, yeah, telling everybody, yeah, how to how to yeah. fix. And and in some respects, we both my mum and I, even though she was ill, uh, we had these conversations. You know, I mean, every time I used to go on these cycling adventures, and you know, you, you know, you can be as old as you want, but you're still, you know, still their daughter, and she used to say to my oh you'll be careful here and oh you're going weird mm -hmm. and then I'd come back and I'd show these videos little videos that I'd done at the side of Loch Ness and pictures and you could just see how proud she was of mine you know and uh, that I hold very dearly and I think that's what's helped me not not make the same mistakes with uh, what I did with my dad and you know I've, 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 I've managed to um, it's been tough. But I've managed to uh, embrace what, what my mum says to me and make it a positive thing, you know, um, going forward. So, so yeah, so I suppose in some respects, uh, around my coaching, uh, yeah, I have been, you know, still coaching, I have been speaking, uh, but um, the last few months, my mum took priority, and rightly so, you know, she was my mum. So, I, I suppose now I'm sort of wanting to get you know back on it, uh, help people again, support people, um, you know, people to come to me if they want to um, hear my story or uh, hopefully inspire them really just to uh, enjoy life, yeah, and uh, yeah, just uh, just get on with it really and just uh, just be yourself. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's a really good example, Debbie, of how important it is to to enjoy what you do, whether you're doing charity work, whether you're doing a, 
running your own business, whether you're an employee for somebody else, if you don't enjoy what you do, then you're not going to do a good job, are you? Oh, no. And uh, I think it's right. You have to find something that makes your heart sing. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, there's no frills in me. What you see is what you get, you know. And, and I think if someone has had some personal experience, I know coaching is not about the coach, it's about the person, but if you've got some sort of empathy about what people are going through, whether you know it's it's around health and well-being which obviously you know all in all i've lost 12 stone in weight i managed to get the the weight off and i've kept it off now i don't know how many years quite a few number of years now and uh i'm 53 i'm i'm probably the fittest i've ever been you know um but along that journey you know there was a few bumpy road uh, rocks in the road and and I've managed to uh, to get back on track. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? I think people need to realise that life's not easy and you will get these obstacles and things in your way, but it's how you overcome them. Um, so, yeah, so I think you have to enjoy what you do. I think you have to have a, a passion for what you do. and. Um, yeah and just enjoy it enjoy the ride as i say enjoy life yeah fantastic we only get one as far as we know absolutely yeah Yeah. well done well you've you've been remarkable um in your own transformation and uh, obviously the transformation of people that you support as well so uh, i'll take my hat off to you debbie how can people find you pardon how can people find you how can people get in touch with you um you can get on my my website is uh, deborahkunde.com and obviously that's clarity in mind i'm on facebook as well i'm on linkedin um instagram so <laughs> you'll probably see a picture of me on cycling or walking i mean it's funny isn't it? how i what i've noticed is more recently is um when i was younger um i had a passion for fishing well, my father, my late father, and I've just recently taken fishing back up, um, which has been uh, quite interesting. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I've been, I enjoy doing uh, new new interests and new hobbies and and finding things to do. But no, I'm I'm sidetracking here, aren't you, Lane? So yeah, you can find me on uh, on DebraCundy.com. Um, or the usual social media things. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And how are you spelling Cundy so people will be able to find you easily? It's uh, C U N D Y, Deborah Cundy or Debbie Cundy, you'll find me. Okay, uh, brilliant. Well, thank you for spending time today, Debbie, and sharing your story. It's been fascinating and hopefully yeah. inspirational to many of our listeners. Thank you. Thank you. I hope uh, I hope people have enjoyed the. Uh, there's loads. I mean, I'm a bit of a back Billy Connolly. I start with one bit and I come back to it. <laughs> so, but so, yeah, I've, I've just sort of tried to say it as it is really. You know, it's how, how it's all um, sort of uh, unfolded, as they say. But uh, it's been lovely talking to you, Elaine. And uh, yeah, have, have a have a lovely week. And uh, thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.